hey, y'all, uh, say to read Mossy Creek Mushrooms. I'm going to try to make this quick since it seems like the rain might be moving in. But I wanted this to be the introduction to where this channel is going now. I was doing the podcast for a little bit, primarily because it's like at home, the health issues. But now that we're doing a lot better, I've been using hiking and biking and all kinds of weightlifting to, to be getting a lot more active, right? I'm now capable of doing this idea that I've been wanting to do. And actually, before I even proffered this idea, people started requesting it. So from now on, this channel will be pushing more and more towards bioprospecting videos. We're still going to be doing stuff in the grow room. We're going to be doing stuff in the lab. I'm still going to be doing some how to's in particular, a lot of cleanup culture work, right? How to clean up cultures effectively using water agar and selective substrates and then things like this. But the main focus is I'm just going to start doing what I basically do every day, which is turning bioprospecting into kind of a lifestyle, I guess. It's just an excuse to get out in the outdoors in a way, but to bring this bioprospecting more to the forefront, this genetic capture, this harvest, bringing it back, not only making the genetics available to you all through our website and our Patreon, which by the way, the new tiers are up and people who support us making these videos will be receiving the wild cultures that we collect. But this is really going to be more about filming, documenting more than anything. We're just going to be documenting the work that we're doing. Instead of trying to feed a bunch of how-tos, I feel like there's so many how-to videos out there now that I'm no longer that guy. I'm no longer the guy that's providing that stuff, that's busting anything open or even telling the trade secrets. I think that we've broke it. We broke the system. Not just me. There's so many other guys who got into this before me, shoulders that I stood on and then many people coming after that have really broken open the game on how to actually start growing this stuff. I think now one of the, the big things is that we need to diversify. We're going to see people diversify in a way that we've not seen before in the mushroom industry. Still are going to have growers. Growers are what feed value all the way up the system, right? Growers, producers are the very foundation I stand on because that is who buys the strains. I work on these strains. I try to perfect them. I work on them. I've got a whole slew of a new series of strains to release both bred and wild. And it's you growers that end up providing the foundation for all of this. But I don't know if you guys have noticed the amount of suppliers, the amount of how-to channels, the amount of podcasters, the amount of, it's just, it's blossoming. We're seeing this flower of mushroom culture finally just, I guess I shouldn't even use flowering to frame framework language. Should I? I should use something more along the lines of, we're now starting to see the flushing. We're starting to see this business go from a pr little primordia or even a spore that's been growing and diversifying into something that's now reproducing. It's now gaining speed. It is gaining mass, velocity. I don't know what you want to call it. It's just awesome to see. It's awesome to see I'm not anywhere near having joined this wave in the beginning, but having joined it a little early on to seeing it di just continue to diversify and then even find my own niche has been a real blessing, a real blessing. I'm in here, one of my favorite places in the world, which is the lake bottom. The lake is drained for the winter. For those of you who don't know how TVA works, those lakes are man-made. They act as reservoirs, but they offer some really prime habitats for hunting, particularly in the summertime, I can jump in the kayak and go from island to island in a chain and do some bioprospecting. So we're going to have bioprospecting videos from the water, from the bikes, from hikes, old growth forest, hopefully adventures with other people, planning on doing farm tours in my travel. So planning a trip to Florida soon in the next few weeks. So if anybody has either a bioprospecting spot that they, if you're in Florida and you want to hit a spot with me, contact me, let me know. I hear reishi's popping down there right now. And I really want some reishi strains. If you've got a farm, I'll be hitting Atlanta down to Tampa, hopefully going down and watching a rocket launch and then all the way back up, maybe somewhat up the East coast and then crossing across the mountains back home. 
If you are somewhere along that route and you've got a farm that you would like to have me stop by and do some consulting or even a farm tour and you want to be on the channel, I really want to do a multitude of things with this channel, but all of it hinges upon getting out there, right? Me getting out, finding these places, um, documenting these places, documenting. Sorry, uh, my daughter is out here by prospecting with me. And so she has been biking. We just take the e-bikes and use them like dirt bikes out here based on the lake bottom. And I just heard of some thumping. So I've always got to make sure that the kid's safe. But <laughs> the point being that this channel is going to be going to some, some really cool phases. We're going to start this series. It's called Prospectors. So we'll have episodes of Prospectors coming out. We'll have real problems solved by real farmers. I don't actually have a title for that segment or that series yet. But my hope is to use the framework of bioprospecting, my reconnection with nature, my touching base with nature and my health, and then using that as a, basically a framework to hang two or three different series on that I can hit. I'm hoping to hit Cactus Hat and then uh, the horticulture in the next few weeks on my Florida trip. There's a couple other farms I'm hoping that I'll be able to, to hit, we'll see. And then of course some bioprospecting spots and planning on taking the RV down with the kayaks and trying to, kayak around some of the swamps. I really want to get just something from the swamps. It's so bad. Um, we've got some travel to festivals this year. Uh, I hope to do videos of that. Um, I will have some announcements on that further, but I will say that I did just get my acceptance for MycoFest. So I'll be at MycoFest up in Pennsylvania. I do plan on talking. So I'll be giving a talk there. And then I'm supposed to be giving a talk at the Oklahoma Mushroom Festival at some point when that happens. But uh, there's a whole bunch to be announced with the Oklahoma Mushroom Festival that's not ready yet. Other than that, guys. I really appreciate your all support. It's a dream come true for me to be able to actually spend this time traveling, getting to meet so many mushroom farmers, the support that you guys have had, getting new cultures into people's hands, new genetics. As I've told you guys before, it has been something I've done as a child. I used to breed flowers. I used to breed isopods. I had a whole spider farm in my little, like in little, what are the GIF jars, J-I-F, the peanut butter jars in my windowsill as a kid. My mom gave me a flower bed where I got to breed some morning glories, marigolds, that kind of stuff. I've just always, I'm our dog, really Josh McGinnis from Everyman Bio came and did some bioprospecting with us, which I'll show some of that. We didn't take much video, but we did take some. And <laughs> she asked me, what kind of dog is this? And I'm like, it's a schnoodle kind of. We've been breeding in schnauzer and poodle and a bunch of other stuff, but I, even that, like I even like having my own dog right? My own style of dog that we've been breeding towards. We do it with peppers and everything else. So this is just such a dream come true to be able to go out, collect wild genetics, bring those back, bring those into the breeding program. I now have two or three generations worth of breeding projects that I've been doing, which are my strains that were bred to other of my strains, which were bred to wild mushrooms, which were then bred to, and it's like finally starting to see some really nice, cool phenotypic changes. And we we're, were even playing around with strain training, generational and filial, filial, which is generational. It doesn't matter. We're planning on to get these to train towards high acid environments, certain pollutants. I'm breeding blue oysters towards in, in ever more extreme, warmer temperatures, right? So I'm going to try to breed a blue that keeps the blue even up into the nineties. We're working on pinks that will go down to the forties, that kind of stuff. Incidentally, it seems to be a lot harder to breed mushrooms towards cold than it is towards hot. Don't know what it is. I mean, I'm able to, just, we're able to, the generations for some reason, I'm like, I'm breeding up into 90 degrees right now for some reason that seems to have no problem. All of this said, guys, this is going to be really cool. Bioprospecting, I feel like is really important in the changing world that we have. Bioprospecting to save genetics from disturbed habitats to grab these genetics as our environment changes, but also just to explore what mushrooms have to offer. We don't know what we don't know 
we don't even know the right questions to ask right now. So collecting strains, if you can, ends up being a, a, a really good thing for the future, right? If you've got wild genetics from all over the place, like we have some from Australia and Austria that have been traded to us, Mongolia, um, Mongolia one's coming. So fingers crossed that gets through customs. But France, UK, I've got stuff from all over the country. I'm hoping to take some trips into Mexico this year. We'll see how all that goes. I'm trying to cram a lot into a year. It may be that I have to divide some of this stuff up because I still have to work, right? Samantha and I still have to be at the shop. And then even though we've got help nowadays, we still need to be there regularly to make sure that things are going the well as well as we're getting grain spawn out. We're getting liquid culture out. Stuff is coming out cleaner than ever. And we're shipping faster than ever. It ends up being something that I want to continue, right? I want that level of service for you guys. Oh yeah, I was supposed to have that nice waterfall this whole time, but I guess I've been covering up. <laughs> that said, guys, we'll be documenting bioprospectors and the, having the episodes out very soon. I hope to have at least the first episode out next week. We do plan on doing weekly videos. It's going to go back to a lot more vlog style video, but uh, bloggy documentary. I've got the cinema camera. For certain trips, there's a, a limit to how much equipment I can carry. So there's a, a limit to how much buttery smooth footage I can get for you guys. But we're going to have it. We're going to have a great year. I think, I don't know. I'm just so excited about 2024. It's already March. I've already made such headway. And we're, even though we're late on getting the new website out, Samantha's got that new website looking gorgeous. And it's about to go live. So yeah, just there's so much good stuff in the works, guys. And again... I think that we need to just continue to push having more and more growers out there, but we need more, we need more diversification. If you're worried about how competitive or how full the market's looking, believe you me, every time I've seen this where people start getting cutthroat, they start getting creative, right? And then every time I've seen this metamorphosis over and over again, where people get cutthroat, other people get creative, the creative ones diversify, the diversification opens up whole new markets. Those new markets end up creating a framework for even better support for producers or university research, all kinds of stuff. This is why we shouldn't worry about competition yet. And maybe not at all for a very long time. Fungus is still so new that I think there's plenty of room over the next decades for us to continue to diversify and improve. With that, y'all, going to have, like I said, about a three-minute segment here for you guys. Some B-roll for prospectors coming up. And just with that, keep spawning culture, y'all. You got it? Okay. In that case, we are here in Bumfuck, Tennessee. <laughs> Every man bio and me, and read about secret questions. Y'all don't tell anybody that we're about to sneak into this. Yeah, we're just the old lime dumping grounds from the mines. So we're about to sneak in. Snacks and chicken.